Hi guys, welcome to this line-by-line -line interpretation of Rudyard Kipling's The White Man's Burden. Uh, let's take a look at the first verse. It says, take up the white man's burden. So it's encouraging people to take up this burden, which we now know is to go out and colonize uh, uncivilized countries. It says, send forth the best ye breed. So it, it's really saying uh, to, to the Western countries to, to send out the best of their children, the, the children that they, they breed. Uh, go bind your sons to exile. Well, send your sons out into the world. And exile is really when you're sent away from your home to spend a lot of time in a foreign place. So, so it's asking uh, Western people, American people to do this. To serve your captives' need. Well, here we have this notion that the act of imperialization is not selfish. It's actually to serve the needs of those that you, to some extent, hold captive. Uh, to wait in heavy harness. Now, heavy harness is really what horses are wearing when they are dragging a cart but it's it's something that they wear when they do really hard and strenuous labor so it's really telling people to send out their young people uh, to serve the uncivilized native people's needs to be civilized to work really really hard on fluttered folk and wild well basically what it says, uh, that you are waiting in heavy harness, you're working really hard for wild people, uh, people who are fluttered, acting like uh, uh, chickens, fluttering around, being wild. Uh, your new caught people, well, yeah, the, the people that you've just colonized, and they're not just uh, savage uh, fluttering wild uh, people. They're also sullen, which is another word uh, of, of expressing that they're actually uh, quite angry that you've taken upon yourself to do this. And it's even, now, now Roger Kipling is referring to them as half devil, half child, underlining the fact that they are very uncivilized, uh, savage people. Uh, first line in the second verse, take up the white man's burden, a repetition from the first one. Uh, in patience to abide, well, you need to be patient. To veil the threat of terror, here we have the use of imagery, uh, that, to, to veil the threat of terror. Well, there's a threat of terror out there in these uncivilized, savage places, and you need to veil it. You know what a veil is, it's really something that's covering your face. and and here you need to veil to cover this this threat of terror. Check the show of pride. Now you need, you cannot do this, you know, uh, for your own pride's uh, sake. And by open speech and simple, you need to to speak openly, uh, and and you need to keep things simple, uh, and maybe you need to do stuff a lot of times. You need to repeat the things that you're doing a hundred times make plain uh, to seek another's profit and work another's gain. Again, here we have this unselfish element that you're working to seek another's profit. You're working for other people's profit, these uncivilized people that will now profit from the civilization that you are bringing to them and work another's gain. Yes, once again, they will gain from whatever the white man is bringing uh, to them in forms of civilization. All right, moving on to the third verse. Take up the white man's burden. This is a recurring line, the recurring first line in all of the verses. The savage wars of peace. Well, <clears throat> wars can be savage, uh, but you are really fighting these wars to establish peace in these savage, maybe unpeaceful uh, 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 areas of the world. Fill full the mouth of famine. Once again, we have an example of imagery here. Uh, 
filling full the mouth of famine is another way of saying that they are feeding uh, hungry people, that they are trying to end hunger out there. Bid the sickness cease, they are also curing illnesses, sickness out there. And when your goal is nearest, the end for others sought. This is again a reference to this unselfish element, that the end for others sought. You are seeking uh, other people's purpose. Uh, end here is a word that uh, is, is sort of the same as, as, as purpose. Uh, you are seeking uh, as someone else's uh, uh, completion of a journey to some extent. Watch sloth, which is uh, sloth is, is laziness, and heathen folly, which is heathen unholy uh, uh, traditions. Watch these uh, activities that these uncivilized people are uh, uh, performing. Uh, bring all your hopes to naught. So sometimes you will see these uncivilized uh, people, the native people of, of the countries being colonized, uh, their natural ways, their traditions, their rituals will will leave you hopeless uh, because you'll, you'll think it's an impossible task. Uh, fourth verse, take up the white man's burden. No tawdry rule of kings. There will be no, no rule of, of, of kings out here. Uh, you will not be the king of of these colonies. No, what what awaits you is instead the toil, which is just really hard work, of serf, which is basically the same uh, word as a servant. So it's the hard work of a servant and a sweeper, someone who sweeps floors. You know, so. <clears throat> You're not be you're not going to be a king of the colonies that you go out to. No, you're going to be a really hard worker. Uh, you'll experience the tale of common things. Um, it, it it's 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 going to be sort of low uh, 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 manual labor that you, you just hard work basically. Uh, the tale of common things. It's not some fairy tale. It's it's going to be hard, and it's going to be sort of menial. Uh, the porch you shall not enter, the road you shall not tread. So these are places where you, you should be very careful going. Go make them with your living. So, all right, so these places, the ports and the roads, are uh, just referring to places out in the world where it's probably safest not to go, but you should go there and make them with your living. Uh, so, of course, the, the, the living young people of the Western countries should go there and, and make these places into something else and mark them with your dead. All right. And here we have a reference to the fact that this, this might cost them their lives. All right. Fifth verse. Take up the white man's burden and reap his old reward. Now, okay, so here comes the reward for actually picking up the white man's burden. The reward is the blame of those you better. Or not, the those you better, well, from a British perspective, the ones that they are bettering are the native people. But what you will reap now here is the blame of those. They will blame you for doing what you're doing. The hate of those you guard. They will hate you even though you are guarding them, you are protecting them. The cry of hosts, you humor. So if we look at the natives as the hosts of, of the imperialists, well, you will experiencing them cry, even though you're trying to do what they want in the sense that they want probably to have a, a, a uh, a better standard of living. So you are humoring them in, in that respect, but they are still crying. And what they're crying is, ah, slowly towards the light, why brought ye us from bondage, a loved Egyptian night? So they are crying, these native people, that 
oh, you brought us toward the light and you brought us free from bondage. Now, bondage is when you're all tied up, unable to move. So they're really crying, why did you enlighten us? Why did you bring us knowledge? Why did you free us from these things that had enslaved us, our, our, sort of, our savage ways of, 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 of dealing with, with life? Uh, our loved Egyptian knight, well, uh, apparently these uh, uncivilized people, they liked being in the dark. They didn't want to be enlightened. They preferred to, to remain in the dark. That's why they're crying to these white imperialists. All right, uh, verse 6. Again, take up the white man's burden. Ye dare not stoop to less, so you, you shouldn't uh, accept anything less, nor call too loud on freedom. And you shouldn't use freedom as an excuse uh, to cloak your weariness. You shouldn't you shouldn't use sort of these ideals of, of freedom to, to cover that the fact that what you're doing is actually really, really hard. Uh, by all you cry or whisper, by all you leave or do, the silent, sullen peoples shall weigh your gods and you. So no matter what you do, these silent, sullen peoples, again, a reference to the native people who apparently aren't speaking a lot, uh, at least not in English, uh, and they're also sullen, they're sulky, they're angry. They will weigh your gods and you, so they will, you know, evaluate whether or not they think or believe that what you are bringing to them is good enough to sort of adopt. All right, and then finally we have the seventh verse that you were also working with uh, in your analysis questions. Take up the white man's burden have done with childish days. Now this, this is the time to do, you know, grown up work. The lightly prophet laurel. Now uh, the laurel is, you know, the, that reef you receive after like winning uh, the Olympics, uh, the laurel. Uh, so the lightly prophet is just, you know, the, the laurel that is easy to obtain as opposed to, ex uh, for example, uh, an Olympic title the easy, ungrudged praise. So praise and laurel, uh, these things which are typically seen as, you know, a, a tribute to some extent uh, by other people, have done with that, okay? You're not gonna get that. Have done with, with childish days, laurels, praise and everything. No, you're not gonna get that. Come to search your manhood, you know, through all the thankless years, you're going to have thankless years. You're not going to have laurels and praise. You're going to have thankless years. And what you're really going to earn is cold-edged with dear-bought wisdom. You will earn the judgment of your peers. So other imperialists will notice the work you're doing, and they will praise it. They will respect you for doing this. That is in the end, ultimately, that is your reward. And yes, this is uh, the theme and message of The White Man's Burden by Rudyard Kipling.